good to be back together again. On niin kuin tiedä olla taas koos jälle. And it's nice to have Andres here with me today. Ja on tore, et Andres on siin täna. His brother has spent seven weeks with me. Tema vend on seitse nädalat koos minu kaudus. And with brother Robert. Ja koos vend Robertiga. So uh, I asked Andres to uh, give him a break. Ja ma palusin Andres, so. et ta... Thank you, Sander. And thank you, Andres. And thank you all for joining us today. It's a joy to be in the presence of God together. I still wish I could see you. But at least we can feel the presence of the Lord together. Let's pray together. Why, wherever you are, why don't you lift your hands with us? And let's just worship God. And invite his presence to fill the place where we are. Lord Jesus, all over this city, and across this nation, we dedicate the place where we are to you. Make it a sanctuary for your presence to dwell in. Meet with us, O God. Speak to us, Lord Jesus. Let your presence fill our lives. Touch our families today. Let your will be done. And we give you praise and thanks. We bless your holy name. You are worthy of praise today. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Why don't you worship God with us for a moment? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. God, we bless you and praise you. We thank you today. We glorify your great name. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I welcome those of you from Tartu. It's good to have you with us. And I welcome those of you from Narva. It's great to have you with us. Amen. We're going to do something a little bit different today. But try to uh, join me in uh, singing the words on the screen. You can see them. And let's just lift up praise to the Lord this morning. Amen. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Praise God.
with us. Lord, you found us. You rescued us. You lifted us, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your kindness is forever. Your goodness is forever. Your mercy is forever. Forever. Sing that with me one time. Your kindness is forever. Goodness is forever. Your mercy is forever. Forever. Your kindness is forever. Your goodness is forever. Your mercy is forever. We thank you for your mercy, O God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the great name of Jesus. Praise him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise him. I just want to let you know that it's in an atmosphere like this in your own home. As the Spirit of God is moving upon you, it doesn't really matter so much about other people. But if God is with you, you can receive from God today. If you have a need in your life, if you need healing for your body, if you need an answer for a situation, or if you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in other tongues, today is a good day to receive from God. So, uh, lift your faith to God. Let your faith grow today. And believe God to speak to you. Hallelujah. Let's pray right now. Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you. Hallelujah. I humble myself before you today. And I ask that you would speak to me. I ask, oh God, that you would speak to each one of us today. Let your presence fill our homes. Let your presence fill the rooms where we're meeting together. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel God's presence today. Amen. Amen. I want to just remind you that even in these uh, strange times, we have opportunities to help other people. And over the years, we've uh, uh, participated with Toidupank, the yeah. food bank. And, uh, and we've had some wonderful times together as yeah. a group. Uh, welcoming people, telling them, uh, and, and joining with the uh, very good work that Toidupank does. So I want to encourage you 
to, uh, to join with us over the next weeks. And if you can find uh, a, one of these red boxes that are in many of the shopping centers, then you can donate your non-perishable groceries, cans, and everything. And it can help a lot of people that are in need right now. So if God has blessed you, you can be a blessing to someone else. There, if you go to Polypunk's website, you can also find telephone numbers that you can uh, call. You can call 900-9005 to contribute 2 euros. You can call 990-10 to contribute 8 euros. Amen, amen. Praise God. Well, the boys and uh, Ingrid and I watched a Christian musical performance of the story of Jonah this week. And the way that the story was presented reminded us that the people of Nineveh were some of the first Gentiles to experience God's mercy and grace when they repented of their sins. Uh, I've been to museums in different places and I've seen examples that show the wealth and power and military fierceness of the Assyrian Empire. It was the greatest power on earth in its day. And it's these same evil people at the time. They're the ones who invented crucifixion. And they were terrible at when they would take over a city and break through the walls. But it was these same people who repented and fasted in humility before God. And they saw their repentance Rather, God saw their repentance and their change of attitude and he relented from the destruction that he had pronounced on them. And their generation was spared. Uh, in the book of Genesis, uh, the Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 2, beginning with verse 1, the Apostle Paul wrote to this great church in present-day Turkey, saying, And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that works in the sons of disobedience now. In verse 3, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans that all have sinned 
Biblis on kirjas, Rooma kirjas, et kõik on patu teinud. And all of us can say amen to that. We know. Kõik võime öelda aamen selle. Not one of us is a perfect person. Mitte keegi meist ei ole täis. Not one of us is without mistakes. Mitte keegi meist on vigadet. Not one of us is without things that we're ashamed of. Ja mitte keegi meist ei oma asju mis ei teeks meile hävi. We're a lot like the people throughout history. Me oleme nagu rahvast ajal oli oksul. Whether it was Noah's day or the days of Nineveh when Jonah came. Noah päevi või Niive ajal. We don't deserve God's goodness. Me ei ole väärt Jumala heradus. So today I want to focus in on this topic. Ja täna ma tahan keskenduda järgnevale teemale. And I want to preach to you about God's goodness. Amen. One more time, would you ask the Lord to speak to your heart? Lord Jesus, we open our hearts to you. Speak a word of encouragement to us, Lord. Bless each one, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to go back to our text and continue. Because in verse number three, we see how much we don't deserve God's goodness. So let's go on to verse number four. Where the text turns. And Paul says, but God, who is rich in mercy. Because of his great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Praise. By, by grace you have been saved. Verse number six. And raised us up together and made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Verse 7. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. In his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. And then here comes this well-known and loved verse. Verse number 8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So you're not saved by what you do. You can't do anything enough to earn God's favor and forgiveness. Grace is a gift. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful for God's free gift of grace? Praise God. But grace came into your life so that you would have good works in your life. Grace doesn't come because of your good works. But grace inspires your good works. The Apostle Paul said this about his own life. He explained about how he had been a blasphemer and he had been uh, um, obstinate or uh, uh, hard-headed. <laughs> God had 
have to shock him and stop him. Jumal pidi teda šokeerides peatama. For him to see the truth. Et ta näeks teda. And to receive the truth. Ja võtaks vastu teda. And so many of us have this same background. Ja nii võib palju teil neist on sanane taust. Where we are just stubborn. Kus me oleme väga põikkaised. And we are sure that we know. Ja oleme kiinnad, et me teame. And God is standing, waiting the whole time. Ja Jumal ootab ja ootab kogu aeg. And his reality. Ja tema reaalsuses. Is actually the reality. Tema reaalsuses on tegelikult. We all have constructed our own versions of what we think is real. Me oleme kõik loonud oma enda versiooni sellest, mida me arvame tõeks. We look at our lives through those lenses of what we think we're looking at. Ja vaatame elu läbi nende lähtsed, millest me läbi vaatame. And I think it's interesting that God chose to blind Paul for a few days. Ja ma... Arvan, et sa on üsna huvitav, et Jumal lasi Paulus imestada mõneks päevaks. He literally physically couldn't see. Nõnda, et ta ei suutnud füüsiliselt näha. But when Ananias came to him and laid his hands on him and called him a brother, then his eyes were opened and he was able to see physically suutis näha füüsiliselt. But now he was also able to see things as they really are. Aga lisaks sellele suutis asju näha ka tõeselt nõnda nagu need tegelikult. Oh God, I want to see with heaven's perspective. Jumal, ma tahan näha taevase vaate vinkliga. Don't you feel that way today? Ja sa tunned end saamuti täna. God went to a lot of trouble. Jumal, to give us unearned forgiveness. And Paul expressed it like this. He, he showed how God did something that he didn't deserve at all. And then Paul said these words. And his grace toward me was not in vain. And he said, I labored more than them all. <laughs> so it's God's will to give you the free gift of grace that you cannot earn with your works. But it's his will also for your response to his grace to be that you work for God. It's, uh, that you do work for God. Out of our gratitude, not out of our, uh, uh, not out of um, requirement, in order to not go to hell, but out of gratitude and sincerity from the heart. When God reaches into my chaos and brings order, it makes me want to serve him. In the Old Testament, there was uh, the year of Jubilee when all of the servants or even people who had uh, become indentured servants like slaves. They were they were not free. But on the year of Jubilee, they went free. And if someone had married someone while serving his master, then he had a decision to make. If he had gained good things in his life while he was in the service of his master, and he didn't want to go away from the life that he now lived. He could go to the elders of the city. And the Old Testament declares that he could plainly say, I love my master. 
Armastan oma isandat. And I will not go free. Ja ma ei taha vabaks saada. I choose to stay. Ma otsustan, et jääda. And he was called a love slave. Ja tõna ületati uh, armastavaks ojaks. I, I don't mean to use the analogy of slavery. Ma ei taha kasutada tähenduses orjus. With all of its evils in history. Mida, mis on seotud kõik suguse kurjusega läbi ajal. But make no mistake. Aga ära eksi. There is a living God. On olemas elav Jumal. He is the master. Tema on isand. We Eesti. are his creation. Ja me oleme tema loodu. And I for one. Ja mina. Want to plainly say that all the goodness that I've received in my time of service to my master, I don't intend to walk away from it. And I don't intend to walk away from him. I love my master. Why don't you lift your hands with me and just let the Lord know that today. Lord Jesus, we love you. And we choose to follow you. We've made our free will choice to be your servant. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for your grace in our lives. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God went to a lot of trouble to give us unearned forgiveness. To give us salvation. He prepared for thousands of years. And then he perf perfectly executed his plan. If anyone did works for our salvation, it was God. He came himself in the flesh. And patiently and carefully for 33 years he fit the impossible pattern that only the Messiah could fulfill. There's a mathematical calculation that's been done by many Bible scholars to show the mathematical impossibility of just one man accidentally fulfilling or purposefully manipulating over 300 predictions written hundreds of years before his birth. Professor Peter Stoner Professor Peter Stoner who lived in 1888 until 1980 yep. and he died in 1980 he discovered the same thing. Professor Stoner was Professor Stoner was the chairman of the mathematics department. Professor Stoner was and uh, astronomy in the college where he taught. And he was the chairman of the science division. At a different college after that. And he calculated the, po uh, the probability of one man fulfilling just a few of the 300 predictions about the Messiah. In 1944, he published his works. And, uh, and he showed his research. And he concluded that the probability of one person fulfilling just eight 
of the specific prophecies about the Messiah calculated to one chance in 1,017. Uh, sorry, one followed by 17 zeros. There we go. <laughs> So how about one person fulfilling just 48 of the 300 prophecies? He calculated the chances of that to one in uh, 14. Uh, I think my uh, font has changed the text that I had for you. Uh, but it was a number that's impossible. It's beyond statistical possibility. And yet Jesus Christ fulfilled as many as 333 prophecies. 333. And uh, many of them in a 24-hour period. He fulfilled them perfectly as they were written. And he showed himself to be God in the flesh. Only God could organize something like that. Praise God. And if he had just done some of what... Uh, uh, was needed for our salvation. It would have been enough. If there had just been a few prophecies about his coming, it would have been plenty. There's a Hebrew expression that means simply it would have been enough. It's traditionally said during the Passover seder or dinner. If God had just spared us from the death angel, it would have been enough. If only he had not judged us, it would have been enough. If he had just not judged us, it would have been enough. If he had just brought us out of Egypt, that would have been enough. If he had just divided the Red Sea but hadn't made us pass through, that would have been amazing. It would have been enough. If he had caused us to pass through the Red Sea but not to enter the Promised Land, that would have been enough if he had brought us into the promised land that would have been enough and yet over and over again God did more than enough and ultimately he gave us Messiah that would have been enough. But now you can look over your own life. And one by one you can measure the goodness of God in your own life. Where God has gone far beyond what was adequate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you take a moment and thank him today with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. Praise God. The Lord didn't have to do anything. It's all grace. We deserve nothing. In fact, we deserve judgment. But he gave us Jesus. 
If he had uh, just given and fulfilled a few prophecies, that would have been enough. But he fulfilled every one of them. And there are still more prophecies that are still to come when he returns. Jesus is coming again. And next time he will come as a judge. But this first time he came with grace. And his grace has lasted for 2,000 years. And you can calculate how many generations of his grace that already comes. He's given us salvation. And we have so much to be thankful for today. Praise God. The devil takes you high to bring you low. Satan tõstab siin kõrgele, et see läbi siin madalasse paika. God takes, God takes you low in humility. Jumal asetab siin alandlik madalasse paika. To bring you high. Et tõsta siin kõrgele. And the way to spiritual peace and growth. Ja vaimuliku rahu ja kasvu tee. Is through humility and tenderness before God. Ja läbi alandlikuse ja Jumala eelduse. That's why we come to God with repentance. Once we believe that He is, then we repent of our sins. And we confess our sins before God. When we do that, we are humbling ourselves. And the Bible teaches that God will raise up the humble. In fact, in the book of Proverbs, the Bible says, God gives grace to the humble. Uh, Paul wrote to Timothy in one of his letters to him. He said, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. No matter what circumstances surround you today, you can stand strong if you will get hold of the grace of God. Because there's grace for you today. Hallelujah. Uh, as I close today, what I'm asking of you as I'm speaking to you is that you will reach for God's grace. How do you do that? You humble yourself and you ask God for His forgiveness, for His grace to cover you. Uh, in the book of James, James writes, if we will confess our sins before God, He is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins. There are so many promises like that one in your Bible. I want to encourage you today to take hold of the opportunity this window of time, this space of time in your life, when you're able to search your heart and think about your life, and take advantage of God's free gift of grace for you. You have not gone too far. You have not fallen too far. That God's grace cannot lift you up God's grace is greater than all of our mistakes. And His grace is not just about lifting us out of the negative. But His grace is an opportunity for us to grow. And I want to grow. How about you? Amen. Take advantage of God's grace. 
inimese võimalus kasutada Jumala kasvarmus. Let God's investment in you produce fruit in your life. Kas Jumala vanustus sinu elu toob esile vilja. By grace you have been saved through faith. Armu läbi olete usmus päästetud. It's the gift of God. See on Jumala ainult. God's grace and your faith combine to open a door for you to new life to being born again of the water and the spirit. That's water baptism in Jesus' name. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking in other tongues. It's God's grace and your faith that makes any of that possible. Hallelujah. Grace opens the door for you to Uh, grow into spiritual maturity. And grace makes it possible for each one of us to fulfill the will of God. What is God's will for your life today? What is God's will for my life? It's God's grace that's going to lead us into His will. And how many know that His will is better than our will? I need His grace. You need His grace. And I have good news for you today. God's grace is available. And since you can't earn it, it's available for free to you. It's not the final step in your spiritual journey. Grace is not the destination. But it's an open doorway. And there's so much possible in your future because of grace. Hallelujah. It's a motivator to grow and mature and do God's will. And it's God's free gift when you believe. I want to read one last scripture from the book of Hebrews. Chapter number 4. And verse 16. It says this, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help. And the word help is actually a noun in the Greek. It's not a verb. The word, the word help. It's grace, it's grace help that God has for you. And it's for the time of need. So I ask you today, do you have a need? You can come boldly before God's throne of grace to find mercy and grace to God. Praise God. Why don't you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we turn our hearts to you and we seek your face. We turn away from wicked things and we seek your will. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would let your grace cover us. Let your grace bless your people today. Let your grace lead us forward into all the great things that you have in store for us. We thank you for your grace. We don't deserve your grace. But you have given it freely. We thank you for it. 
down as he's ever asked. Hallelujah. Why don't you just worship the Lord with me? Oh, praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be your great name, Jesus. You're worthy of praise, oh God. Worthy of honor and glory. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There's a sweet presence of the Lord in this place. And I want to sing a song just a cappella with you. I want to try it in uh, three languages today. So if you can see it on the screen, why don't you sing it with me? It goes like this. Jesus, ole Jesus, kuningate kuningat, ole Jesus, Jesus, ole Jesus, kuning. Gate kuningas makidan si. Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. Father, I pray your blessing on each one that's joining us today. I pray, Lord, for each one that joins us after this service. Let your blessing rest upon their lives. Guide and protect them. And let your peace be upon us. Thank you for your grace. We celebrate it and worship you today. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you today in Jesus' name.